Jimmy Stewart with a welcome to the Hollywood Star Playhouse, brought to you by the Bakers of America. Hollywood Star Playhouse, 30 minutes of mystery, thrills, drama by Hollywood's finest writers featuring Hollywood's top stars. Brought to you by the Bakers of America through the cooperation of your baker. Hello there, this is Wendell Niles. In a moment, we'll bring you Act One of today's transcribed story, The Six Shooter, starring Mr. James Stewart. And now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring Mr. James Stewart. The rain had stopped, but the wind still carried slivers of moisture that cut into the boy's face as he rode along the edge of the creek. When he saw the yellow light from the back of the office, he pulled up and slid out of the saddle. Then he tied a wet bandana under his eyes and walked to the door. All right, hi. Way up, both of you. And stay away from that shotgun. Now, now, look here. You, you, get over to the safe. Better hurry up, mister. All right, now open it. I said to open it. All right, toss me that sack. Okay. You, you. Now, you rotten little. I hadn't figured on going through Clay City. Uh, it was an hour out of my way, and I was already a day late to the Jefferson Ranch where I'd signed on for the roundup. But when Scar started limping from a loose shoe, didn't have no choice. We had to head for the nearest blacksmith shop, so we turned north. Mister, what's the trouble? Uh, the horse losing a show. Well, let's have a look. All right, raise it up, fella. Come on, come on, boy. Uh, it's split, mister. He needs a new one. Okay, boy. Can you take care of it? Oh, sure. Bring him over here. Hey, uh, what happened to Red, fella used to own this shop? Went to Nevada chasing silver. I bought him out. Oh, I... Yeah, you, you don't look very much like a blacksmith, huh? Oh, I'm stronger than I look. Heavier, too. What do you think I weigh, mister? Oh, I don't know. Go on, go on. Take a guess. 120? 30? Mm, well, no more than that. You a betting man, mister? Oh, well, sometimes. Well, I say I weigh over 130. If I don't, you get the new shoe for nothing. If I do, you pay me double. What do you say? Well, you got a set of scales? Don't need no scales. What do you say, mister? Is it a bet? <laughs> Don't seem to be no way of proving it. Oh, all you got to do is lift me up. Now, you look like a man who can judge weight. What do you say? Okay, all right, it's a bet. All right, mister, just heist me. If you don't think I weigh more than 130, the shoe is free. <laughs> all right, I, I never tried to judge a man's weight before, but all right. There, there we go. <laughs> well? Oh, I'll be dull. Huh? I'm packed. Solid, mister. Real solid. Well, you're packed tighter than a steer. Hey, you must weigh 150 pounds. Yeah, you see? You see? What did I tell you? 158. <laughs> the horseshoe's gonna cost you money, mister, but you ain't the only one. Ever since I bought the shop, there ain't been a stranger come through Clay City but what he paid double for his first horseshoe. <laughs> he ain't sore, mister. No. No, that was a fair bet. Sure it was. I told you I was heavier than I look. That's what folks call me, Heavy Norton. My real name's George, but everybody calls me Heavy. Hey, what's your name, mister? Ponsett. Britt Ponsett. Fella, they call the six shooter? Well, doggone it. I've heard about you, mister. I've sure heard about you. <laughs> oh, would have recognized you if I'd have noticed your gun. Sure is fancy, ain't it? Hey, do you mind uh, showing it to me? No, no. Here, catch. Hey. Real fancy. Just like.
Sheriff Schofield said. He says he's seen you fire six shots with it while Whitey Jackson was getting off his first bullet. That time down at Eagle. Well, the sheriff kind of likes to build up a story. Oh, he swears it's the truth. Here's your gun, Mr. Ponsett. Thanks. Sure, sure. You was mighty quick in getting into Clay City. Uh, How'd you hear about it so fast? Hmm. Well, to hear about what? The holdup at the Fargo station last night. Ain't that why you come? Nope. No. I was headed past town. I turned off because Scar got that loose shoe. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? Fellow holds up the Fargo office, kills one man, maybe two, gets away with $5,000, and 12 hours later, you ride into town. Well, they got any idea who did it? Nope, not a single solitary one, from, from what I hear. Like I say, the deputy agent was dead when they found him. Other fella, Fred Wilmer, a friend of his, got shot up pretty bad. Ain't done no talking yet. Doc says maybe he never will. Will Sheriff Schofield take out a posse? Nope, ain't nobody to go. Most of the men signed up for the Jefferson Roundup. Left town day before yesterday. Here the Jefferson Ranch is paying good money this year. Yeah, yeah. You uh, seen the sheriff this morning? No, not lately. He might be over to his office. Uh, I think I'll walk down that way while you're fixing up Scar. Sure, sure, Mr. Ponsett. That's a darn good idea. Sheriff Schofield will be real glad to see you. A couple of doors this side of the sheriff's office, I saw the Wells Fargo sign nailed up next to a window. The place wasn't locked, so I went inside. One of the chairs was upset, and there was some damp stains on the floor. The cast iron safe against the wall was standing wide open, so I kicked it shut. Went out in the back stoop. There was some more blood on the steps, and then just red mud. Right at the edge, I saw the hoof prints. They trailed off along the side of the creek. Whoever made them headed west. The horse had been wearing one shoe different from the other three. A a sharp rock must have cut into it sometime or another. Not enough to split it, you understand. Just enough so that the print left a jagged line, like, like fancy handwriting. Find something, Britt? Hmm? Oh, oh, hello, Sheriff. I was heading your way. Yeah, I just saw Heavy. He told me you was in town. Did you find something? I don't know. I don't know. You see these hoof prints? Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't mean nothing. The trail gives out a mile or so down the creek at Fork. Uh-huh. Has Clay City had any other trouble lately, Ed? No, not a bit. I guess any town's got to expect to hold up once in a while, though. No, I heard it was a little more than that. Yeah. That's right. Fred Wilmer able to talk yet? Afraid not. Doc said he'd let me know first thing he'd come around. Took him out to his ranch. You've been out there to see him since last time? Wasn't no reason. Well, it might be a good idea to be there, you know, just in case. You're... Thought maybe I ought to stick in town. Oh, I don't think anything more is going to happen here, Ed. I'll get Scar and I'll meet you out at Fred's place. Huh? I can handle this alone, Britt. Oh, sure, sure. I'll just offer to keep you company, Ed. I'll meet you there. He's all fixed up, Mr. Ponsett. Tied him up around the side so he'd be in the shade. Thanks, Harry. Thank uh, you. Did you find uh, Sheriff Schofield? I-, I told him he was in town. Yeah. Did you figure out anything? Uh, not so far. Oh, you will. Sheriff's a good man. Why, you and him together, you'll get whoever done it. No, maybe so. Maybe so. You're the only blacksmith round here, ain't you, Heavy? Only one for 40 miles. Uh-huh. You ever see a horse with a shoe that's got one jagged edge, left hind leg? A lot of shoes got jagged edges, Mr. Ponsett. Yeah, well, I'll show you what I mean. I ain't much of an artist. Now, here, it it, uh, it kind of looks a little like this. Hmm. Seems to me I seen a shoe like that just the other day. Uh, oh, sure, I remember. Told him I ought to get a new one for it. Ben Schofield, that's who it was, just the other day. Ben? Uh, the sheriff's kid. You know him, don't you, Mr. Ponsett? Oh, sure. Sure, I ain't seen Ben in a couple of years. So. Oh, you wouldn't recognize him if you did. He just sort of growed up overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he has. We'll return for Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring Jimmy Stewart in just a moment. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> The 
Sheriff Schofield was sitting on Fred Wilmer's porch swing when I got there. Doc was inside with Fred, so I squatted down on the stoop and waited. About half an hour, the doc came out and told us we could go inside and see Fred. Fred was lying on a cot, breathing hard, and a white cloth across his chest was stained pink, and his voice sounded like it was full of air. We was just sitting in the express office talking, Sam and me. Didn't hear the back door open. Must have left it unlocked. Turned around, and there he was, holding his gun on. <laughs> you got a look at him, Fred? Handkerchief over his face, Sheriff. I couldn't see nothing. Just the gun. He told Sam to open the safe. There wasn't nothing else he could do. Sure, sure. He took the money, walked over to the door. Yeah? Looked at us for a minute, and then shot. He didn't have no reason he... Hit Sam in the face and hit me in the chest. He didn't have no reason. <laughs> now, take it easy, Fred. Take it easy now. It's just like he enjoyed shooting at us. That's how it was like he enjoyed it. Maybe he was scared. Oh, he wasn't scared, Sheriff. He didn't have no reason. Thought he killed us both. Then he started down the steps. I got my hand on the shotgun and let him have it. You hit him? I don't know. Maybe he gave a yell and rode off. Uh-huh. What kind of a fellow was he? He was young, old? I couldn't see his face. Young fellow, I'd say, though. How young? Oh, 17, 18, full grown. Was he tall, short? Medium. About the size of your kid, Ed. <laughs> About that size. <laughs> Got enough for you, Ed? Yeah, that's enough. You... You think you'll get him, Brad? Sure, Fred. Sure. Sure. Come on, Ed. Didn't have no reason to shoot. No reason. Let's go, Ed. We're wasting our time, Brad. He's got a day's head start. He'd be 40 miles from here. Well, not if he shot up. Now you go on if you want to. Well, you're the sheriff. You've got to make the arrest. You ain't never been so particular before. Well, maybe not, but this time I'm particular. <clears throat> you coming? We don't even know where to start. Oh, I thought along the creek. That's as good a place as any other. <clears throat> it's a waste of time, Britt. Well, we got time to waste. Come on, let's go. Picked up the trail along the creek and headed west. It wasn't hard to follow, and every once in a while we'd see a few drops of blood spattered against the shrub brush. About ten minutes later, we came to a fork where Ed had said the trail gave out. Scar stuck his nose down into the water, and I looked around. The trail didn't give out. It turned south. I nodded in that direction. Ed didn't say a thing. Just followed. And about five o'clock, we stopped to eat. El built a fire, and I opened up a couple of cans of beans I had in my roll. Oh, you ain't hungry, Ed? It's early for supper. Yeah, yeah. Ed, I talked to Heavy before I went out to Fred's place. I asked him who had a horse that would leave a mark like the one we've been following. So? And he said bed and did. Your son, Ben. I thought you ought to know that. A lot of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. Fred said it was a young fellow. It wasn't Ben. Where is he at? Jefferson's Ranch, working on a roundup. He left Clay City the day before yesterday. Couldn't be Ben. There's a lot of wild youngsters in these parts, but Ben's a good boy. Couldn't be him. You sure? That mark don't mean nothing. Plenty of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. You know that, Fred. You had enough to eat? Yeah. Come on, let's go. The moon came out, thin, yellow. Not real bright, but enough so you could follow the trail. About three miles, there wasn't no blood. He must have wrapped something around the wound. Wrapped it real tight. And then we found the bandage. 
A piece of shirt tail sopped through. For the next mile, I'd been bleeding a lot, worse than ever. He was hit pretty bad. Looks like it. He couldn't have gone much further because I... Oh. Hold it, Scar. Ed. Yeah. Hold on. Over there in the gully, that cabin. Yeah. Whose is it? Used to belong to Jake Levant. Died a couple of years ago. Ain't nobody living there now. There's somebody living there. Huh? Out and back. There's a pony. Better go ahead on foot. Red? Yeah? We're going to take him alive, ain't we? If we can. we got to take him alive, Britt. It's been... I don't know, Britt. Not for sure. It could be Ben? It could be. Where's he been the last couple of days? I don't know that neither. Had an argument with him two nights ago. He needed some money. He'd been playing poker and lost a lot. Well, Five thousand's a lot. I wouldn't give him none. He got mad, said he'd get it, said he'd get it himself. And I hit him. Hard across the face. I hit him twice. He started to hit me back. Then he walked out of the house. I ain't seen him since. I wish he had hit me back. Now, we got to get across that clearing, Ed. Over to that clump of trees. He may see us. Yeah, we'll have to take that chance. You ready? Yeah. All right? Sure. We'll stay in these trees for a couple of minutes. Okay. And then we'll rush him. Ain't gonna be easy to take him, Ed. Now that he's spotted us. You ain't gonna kill him, Britt. I ain't gonna let him kill me. It ain't his fault, Britt. It's mine. You know that ain't so. No, it's the truth. It's my fault. You didn't raise him to be a killer, Ed. Maybe I did, Britt. I was a sheriff, seeing that everybody kept close to the line, seeing that everybody lived honest, especially Ben. I broke him, Britt. Broke him like you break a wild horse. I tried to take all the fight out of him fast. You know what happens when you do that to a horse? He gets tame, but the fight still learns. Someday he turns wild again. I'll rush him alone, Ed. No. Stay here, Britt. Well, Sam Norton's dead. Maybe Fred Miller, too. Killing Ben won't bring him back. He's my son, Britt, my only son. You don't have no kids. You don't know. I'm sorry, Ed. No, we're going back to town. Not without him. We're going back. Now, you can outdraw me, Britt, but I'll still have time to get a shot off. I'll try to get him alive, Ed. I'll try. No, don't turn your back on me, Britt. Don't be a fool. Don't make me do it, Britt. I wasn't being brave. I knew he wouldn't shoot. A man like Ed Schofield just don't change overnight. You can figure a man like Ed. That's what I thought, anyway. But I hadn't figured what would happen next. I haven't figured on him running out into the clearing, standing there in the moonlight, gray against the black sky. Ben! It's me, Ben! You're dead! Can you hear me, Ben? Britt Ponce is coming after you! Throw out your gun, Ben! Britt Ponce is coming! Now listen to me, Ben! It's your Ben! I saw him go down, real slow, like his legs had buckled under him. I couldn't tell how bad he'd been hit. He rolled down a gully out, out of range, and I crawled forward. I pushed myself past a couple of rocks and head toward the back door. The kid was in the kitchen. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him moving around, going from window to window, looking out, waiting for me. I slid past another rock. I could run to the door or wait. The kid made up a mind for me. I slipped down fast, and the bullets nicked the rocks. The kid had good hearing. He knew I was right there. I took out my gun and waited. I knew he'd get nervous first. Young fellows always do. I wasn't so young. I could wait. It was more than five minutes before the door started opening. His pony knew I was coming, too. He started for the horse. I aimed at his leg. <laughs> For a second, he stopped moving and just hung in midair like a hawk. Then he sprawled forward out of sight behind a log. I raised up a little and 
Hunch myself along the side of the cabin. Everything was quiet now. Even his pony. The moon went behind a thick cloud, and I came around the corner of the cabin. Suddenly the moon came out again, just in time for me to see his 45, just in time to see him coming up over the top of the log. His revolver slipped out of his fingers, and I saw him trying to reach for it again. He couldn't make it. I stood up and walked over to the log. The kid was lying face down, gasping for breath, a little short gasps. He pulled himself onto the flat of his hands, and then he passed out. I turned him over with my foot, and I looked at his face. Where'd he get you? In the shoulder. I'm gonna be all right. Britt, is he... Did you have to... He ain't dead. Thanks. I guess he didn't hear me calling to him. He didn't know who I was. Ed. What? Ed, it ain't Ben. What? It ain't Ben, Ed. You... You sure, Britt? Yeah, yeah, this kid's got red hair. There ain't no reason to lie to me, Britt. I ain't shot up bad. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I knew it wasn't Ben while I was going up after him. I knew it. What are you talking about? Hey, just come to me. A man don't change overnight. Neither does a boy. Well, if it ain't Ben... It... Uh, lots of tough kids in these parts. You said so yourself. Where do you suppose Ben is? Where you said, Jefferson Ranch, working in the roundup. They pay good. No. A boy don't change overnight, Ed. Huh. You able to ride back to town? Yeah, sure. I may have to take it a little slow. I'll get the kid. Britt. Yeah? You know something, Britt? I couldn't believe it was Ben neither. No, when he shot me. I just couldn't believe it. You know that, Britt. I know it, Ed. I know it. Jimmy, that's one of the most heartwarming and at the same time suspenseful yarns we've heard in a long, long time. Thanks a lot. Well, Wendell, when it comes to that thanks department, let's just be mighty sure we include Parley Bear, Herb Bygren, Bert Holland, and Bill Conrad, who played the sheriff. Bye. Be sure to come back, Jimmy. In just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll introduce Miss Diana Lynn, the star of next week's story on Hollywood Star Playhouse. Say, I wonder if your family weekends are anything like the ones at our house. You see, ours are very informal, and... Lots of times, our meals are very irregular. I make a point of seeing that Mrs. Niles doesn't do a single extra bit of meal fixing she can help. So if you ever drop in on the Niles some weekend, you better bring along a husky appetite for sandwiches. We love them. Any kind. But a great favorite with the boys and myself is a, a ham egg burger. Ever tried one? Well, listen. They're so simple, I make them myself. I take hamburger buns, slice them in half, and toast them. Then I spread two tablespoons of canned deviled ham, a scrambled egg, and a couple of tablespoons of grated American cheese on each bun. I toast them in the broiler with a low heat until the cheese begins to melt. Yes, that's a ham egg burger. Honestly, it's just about a meal in itself. Oh, maybe we top it off with a piece of cold apple pie right out of the refrigerator and a cup of coffee or two. That's all. So tonight... Why don't you try a Nile special, a mouth-watering ham egg burger? Now, here is the star of next week's thrilling story on Hollywood Star Playhouse, Miss Diana Lynn. I guess we all dream about the perfect job we'll land someday. You know, good pay, easy hours, a perfect atmosphere to work in, an ideal boss. Well, I landed my dream job, only it turned out to be not a dream, but a nightmare of terror.
James Stewart can currently be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, Bend of the River. Tonight's transcribed story was written for Mr. Stewart by Frank Burt. The entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any similarity to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to be with us again next Sunday for the Bakers of America program, Hollywood Star Playhouse. Enjoy another half hour of fine entertainment brought to you direct from Hollywood by your baker. <laughs>